some of these people that have gone cannot afford it. So how did they do it? Mm. How, how did these people we go to study? Yeah. So that was when I started looking and asking around and looking for opportunities. Like people said, okay, you can get scholarship. And people tell you, you know what? Yeah, you can get scholarship. Just go and Google it. And then you go ah. and Google it. <laughs> you don't find you don't find anything on Google. People are like wicked. Yeah, it says that Google, you don't find anything on Google. I'm like, oh my god, where do I go from here? I stayed there, stayed up day and night until I figured out how to secure scholarships for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you have all been waiting for. So, yeah. Hey, Hi. how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. And you? I'm very well, thank you. We are in Nigeria, so we had a, um, a bit of power fluctuations. So I wanted the electricity to stabilize before we came live. So we'll not be talking live and then light will go. And then we're talking live again and light will go again. <laughs> you know how we're in Nigeria. So yeah. it seems a bit stable. Relocating to Canada with ease. Let me present to you the lady who needs no introduction because she was with us um, a few weeks ago, if I'm correct. And yeah. she had the Canada relocating issues, especially going the study route. So over to you. The floor is yours, Zeno. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be back here again. Um, Woo! For... <laughs> for those of you joining us on every platform, you're welcome. I'm live today with Daddy Freeze. Um, my name is Zeno. I am an educational consultant at Success Factors Migration. I am also a third year PhD candidate at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. Um, wow. Several years ago, I relocated as an international student to Canada. That was in 2017 with my two-year-old son. And we came to Canada for a better life. And we relocated via the study pathway. So I was able to secure funding. So I know how expensive it is when people talk about the study pathway. And everybody looks the other way. Like, you know, I can't. I don't even want to think about it because I don't have the money for it. I was like that too, thinking that, you know, I can't afford the study part where I don't have the money for it. But then I was able to secure scholarships to relocate to Canada with my son. And since I did that, I've been teaching people the same thing, how to relocate abroad via the study pathway. And this goes across most all the high income countries canada uk us new zealand australia just name it name the country that you want to study the principles are the same so this goes across all the country all the countries and that's what i've been doing and together as a community with my instagram my facebook and my youtube community we've been able to secure over three million dollars in scholarships as a community and i still go around spreading the word because i see that a lot of people want to relocate but they are stuck they don't know how to start or where to start from. So that's what I do. And that's me, basically. Um, oh, <clears throat> okay. Did you want to say something else? Yeah, I was going to say that I could start by sharing my story so that people, Please, can, that's people can relate. Story. Before yeah, I start asking. When, when they see me, they just think that maybe my life was a bed of roses and I was flexing. And maybe my father had money somewhere and he used that to send me abroad that wasn't the case mm. um just like many of us i went to a public nigerian university university of benin that was where mm. i did my bachelor's and i graduated in 20 in 2010 i proceeded to do my nyc during my nyc i was one of the fortunate few that was able to secure a job so i secured a job during my nyc in one of the oil service companies then in baker hughes it was a good job at least for my level at that time it was a good job i could buy myself a car i could go for a vacation so it was a good job i used to go to the field and do all those things in the oil field i get field bonuses and then um at this time, I was, I'd already thought about relocating, but because I had this good job, I packed my relocation dream. I just packed it in one corner. And I decided that I was going to work, and perhaps a few years down the line, I could think about other options. In um, 
2016, when the oil price dropped, I'm sure that many people were affected by the oil price drop of 2016. When the oil price dropped in 2016, that job that I was relying on, I lost it. I lost the job. So it was like... People lose the job. Did they just say, okay, your services are no longer wanted? Or it was just... Yeah, I, I remember the economic downturn in 2016. And I had a salary cut then that till I retired this year, the salary was not increased. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, I remember that I was sitting in my office when HR just called me and they were like, yeah, you know, um, come, come to my office. I knew it had happened because then they were letting people go. So I knew that it was my turn. And then I went there and the lady was trying to say, you know, sign this document. I'm like, no, I'm not signing the document because then we're trying to form a union. I'm not signing the document. My union says don't sign the document. And I left the office. Before I got home, they had cut off my phone, closed, shut me out of my computer and everything. It was from Ikoi to Ibuwe from then. Before I got home, yeah, everything was gone. And it was like a joke. It was all gone. And at this time, I didn't have a lot of savings. I think by the time I lost the job and I went back to look into my bank account, I had only 1.2 million naira. It was, hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where do we go from here? What's next? I decided to call all my contacts. I'd made some contacts in, oil, in the oil companies then because I used to work with them. I called all my contacts and there was nothing that was happening because they are like, yeah, I wouldn't have company. They are laying people off. So there, is no, there are no opportunities. When there are opportunities, we'll call you. And I stayed there thinking, what do I need to do? I remember like it was a day to my birthday. So it was like, a sad birthday present. What next? What do I need to do? That was when, um, in the sort of sadness and staying home every day and going depressed, I decided I was going to dust my certificate back and look into this my relocation dream. So I dusted my certificate and I'm like, yeah, they said that you can travel abroad. Let's travel abroad. At that time, I first of all tried other methods, but it wasn't working. So I decided I was going to go via the study pathway because personally, I always known that the study pathway is the easiest, fastest, and um, most reliable way to relocate abroad. So I took my certificates that, okay, I'm going to do this. Just like many of us, when you say um, you want to relocate abroad, the first thing that comes to people's mind is to go and get an agent, use an agent. So just like many of us, I looked for an agent. That was the first thing I did. Agent, agent, Mr. Agent, where are you? Come and help me. I want to go abroad and study. So at first, agents couldn't even get me admission. So first of all, I was lucky to fall in the hands of good agents, the ones that would not take my money and run away. So I was that lucky. So the agent couldn't even get me admission and had waited for a while. So after waiting for a while, I'm like, why am I even wasting my time? I looked for another agent. Then admission came. I was so excited. Oh, yes, admission. By the time I saw the tuition fees, $30,000 per year. $30,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, will I see $30,000 from? Uh -huh. You know, where about, one moment. <laughs> one million, 1.2 million at that stage. <laughs> exactly. One moment you are dropping the excitement that you got in admission. The next moment you look at the tuition. That's the end of your excitement. Excitement caught short. And I'm like, okay. It seems like we have gotten to the end of the tunnel, but there is no light. It is very dark here. Yes. <laughs> we got to the end of the tunnel and they, they forgot to own the generator. Exactly. This one, eh? Lepa, Lepa failed me here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so that was when I began to ask around. Because I know that back then, I had some friends from Uniben that had gone abroad to study. These people were friends. I know their background. If... I thought about it. If this tuition is $30,000 per year, some of these people that have gone cannot afford it. So how did they do it? Mm. How, how did these people Wisdom. go up to study? Yeah. So that was when I started looking and asking around and looking for opportunities. Like people said, okay, you can get scholarship. But people tell you, you know what? Yeah, you can get scholarship. Just go and Google it. And then you go ah. and you Google it. <laughs> you, don't find, you don't find anything on Google. People are like wicked, this, yeah, I said, yeah, Google, you don't find it on Google. I'm like, oh my God, where do I go from here? I stayed there, stayed up day and night until I figured out 
how to secure scholarships for myself. So between when I had this, um, when I started applying, I figured it out by starting applying. Of course, when you start, you'll be getting responses. First of all, you don't get responses. Secondly, you get responses of people telling you no. Then there was one day I attended one of those, I think it was on YouTube, one of those sales pitch, one of those people that were giving their sales pitch. And the person was talking about people that sell physical products. And he's like, every product has their flaws. But as the seller of this product, you have to make sure that your consumer or your customer sees this product and is ready to invest in the product. Hmm. So that's when I decided to put myself as, okay, if I am the product and I'm applying for scholarship, I need to make these people, show these yeah. people my value so that they can invest in me. Hmm. Because telling people alone that, you know, I'm, I'm unemployed, I'm from a poor country, nobody gives you money because you are poor. Yeah. So I had to change, I had to change my tactics. And once I started presenting my value, I got a few offers. And finally, I landed at the University of Waterloo. It was the most exciting day of my life when the offer letter came with funding and i realized that okay i did not have to pay tuition anymore like wow. it just seemed like everything everything fell in place and finally somebody turned on the generator inside of my tunnel so, <laughs> mm. so that was it i applied for the visa I was fortunate to get the visa for myself and my son and we relocated. It's I know that many people may be thinking that okay, um, some people will tell you that you know when you go abroad, you go and wash plates or you go and work in the mortuary and you go and do all sorts of things. Since then, since I relocated to Canada, it seems like the doors opened and I've been able to secure scholarships upon scholarships for myself. While I was in Nigeria, I drove one. So you saw Corolla 2005. But as a human being, that's always been my dream to drive a brand new car. I was able to achieve that even as a student. In Nigeria, I wanted to live in the kind of... But last time, do you know, you did not tell us this one last time. Oh, yeah. Well, that time, I'll just, I'll just get it acquainted to us. <laughs> so now, now we are now friends, so I can now begin to open up. Oh, boy. Within the first no. two years of landing in Canada... I want to pick up on something you said. I remember when I was setting up my YouTube channel, I didn't have a clue what to do. So I was asking people. Everybody was telling me just the way they were telling hey, you will see it on YouTube. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is a Herculean pro process. Yes. It's easy. And do it. Just, just Google it. Uh -uh. Exactly. Google and it. And I now went I with a set of people for some Samsung event. They were all YouTubers. I now sat down with them. I said, please, guys, Show me how would they do this thing. All of them just made it look so easy. I thank God to the glory of God. I'm bigger than all of them on YouTube now. <laughs> they are shakara, whatever they want to do with it, let them do with it. But I, I understand where you're coming from because people naturally don't like to help. They will rather give you money than show you where they got theirs from. So what you're doing is actually a community service if people are willing to sit down, listen, try to assimilate, and then understand and put things together. Because every day people are thinking, you see, the dollar now is going for almost 600 naira, if not more yeah. than 600. People are speculating. Nothing works. We have nothing literally working. And we want Nigeria to remain peaceful. So the only option is for us to leave the Nigeria, let it remain peaceful. Now, yeah. I'm going to leave Nigeria, I'm going to leave Nigeria, I'm going to leave Nigeria, I'm going to leave Nigeria. Do you know the road to leave Nigeria? So everybody is hearing this beautiful place, about this beautiful place called Canada. I actually visited in 2019, just before um, the, the COVID. Then, and I stayed in Ontario, really beautiful, big, uh, wide streets, yeah. nice, you know, everything works. I visited Toronto. I yeah. liked it. But you see, that's because my mother is Romanian and I have a Romanian passport that doesn't need a visa to Canada. What about you? 
You don't even have a passport, let alone a passport that does not need a visa. Do you know where the Canadian embassy is? So this is when you need to start listening. 